Well, good morning, everyone. I want to thank uh, everyone who's here, and most importantly, folks who've been involved in this project, and also in uh, whether it's climate change or renewable energy, uh, or even tribal economic development, uh, for being here today and sharing with us in what is a very, very significant announcement. And uh, first, let me just acknowledge a couple of folks who are, they're going to be speaking a little bit later, but I do want to mention their names, especially for folks uh, tracking. We, of course, have our CEO and chairman of PM, Pat Vincent Klein. Pat. Clap. <laughs> and we have the president elect of the Hickory Apache Nation, Daryl Pius. And also one of our uh, solar partners here from Hecate Solar, uh, Pat Davis. No, that's Counselor. I don't have a name. Tell me your name again. Craig Overmeyer. Craig Overmeyer. Not to be confused with City Counselor Pat Davis. <laughs> Let's give them both a round of applause. So we're going to hear a little bit from folks uh, that I just mentioned in, a, in just a moment. What I want to do is kick things off with some opening remarks. Uh, also, of course, I know there's lots of advocacy groups here, whether it's uh, 360 or Environment New Mexico. I want to thank everyone for being part of this collaboration. And uh, for us, you know, when I took, when I ran for this office, uh, and even actually when I ran for the state senate, when I ran for state auditor, people would always ask me the same question. Why are we not a leader in renewable energy? I've gotten that question for 10 years. And in many ways, I tried to work on that in the Senate. We made a little bit of progress. Wasn't terribly relevant in the auditor's office, so didn't make any progress there. But one of the big reasons why I ran for mayor is because I believed that this position actually allows us to move the needle in big ways and to demonstrate leadership on a number of fronts. And this, I think, is a prime example when it comes to sustainability of what leadership can actually achieve, especially when we work together with our partners, even from across the state. So I believe that our city should be 100% renewable, not in the far away 2075 future, but like in the next five years. And because of this announcement, we actually might be able to achieve that. We are going to take a huge chunk out of that today, thanks to the help of our partners. And so I want to share with you a couple of pieces about what we're announcing today. Specifically, I think folks are aware of our partnership with PM and Albuquerque's uh, energy renewable community to try and be 100% uh, renewable, as I mentioned, within five years. But this partnership is going to take us to 65% renewable energy. And so the way this is working is PM and the city and our partners at the Hickory Nation uh, are actually going to be building a facility to supply 65% of that energy. And so now this is also an amazing way. We're right here in the center of our state in, Alba in Albuquerque and in our urban capital. We are actually also going to be helping in many ways tribal economic development as far away as Dulce, New Mexico. That is an amazing example, I think, for the rest of our state and the rest of the country. Now, the direct solar program that we're discussing today is the next step in our mission to power communities with clean energy while, of course, also saving our environment. I want to mention a few facts just about the CO2 emissions and what this facility is going to do to those. Once this is fully implemented in 2021, we are going to take out one, 168 million tons of coal burning each year out of the system and replace it with solar energy and give it right here to citizens in Albuquerque. And under this program, we are also expecting to save money. So under this program, the city will be receiving a savings that will range between 800,000 and 5 million over the next five years uh, from fuel exemption credits. So this is not only gonna make us cleaner, it's also uh, gonna hopefully reduce in many ways our electricity bill. Now, we believe that the price of fossil fuels is probably going to increase in upcoming years. I know that's a generic statement, and there's lots of people who might have differing opinions on that. But just at a high level, we believe that's probably the case, which is all the more reason to invest in solar now to prevent further costs down the road, be it direct cost to consumers or indirect cost to the environment. Now, for me, what this means, I think, is something very, very special. Because when this project is finished, we are no longer going to be able to not have an answer to that question that I first stated in the beginning. 
We will be one of the top 10 major cities in America when it comes to renewable energy. Finally, we will be a leader in renewable energy. That is a very, very special thing for us, and I think it's, it's been in many ways in the works for a long time. But what it has taken is a combination of a couple of folks in our community, as well as the hard work of many individuals at PNM and at the city and at the Hickory Nation. And so I'm going to introduce some of the folks to speak about their respective entities that have been involved. But I want to mention one piece about the city of Albuquerque. In case you hadn't heard, we have a new sustainability team that we've built that is comprised of cross-departmental leaders. We have a chief sustainability officer. Kelsey, where are you? Wait, there she is. She exists. She's a person. It's not just on paper or a press release. And uh, our team is driving this across the board. And on the more tangible construction, getting the job done front, I also just want to give special mention to our COO, Lawrence Real. Yet another amazing project with Lawrence's name on it. Now, to do this at the city, in our broader city team, which is uh, some behind me and some over there, we have had to work uh, deeply and intensely with our partners, especially at PM. And I want to um, share a little bit about our CEO of PM. Of course, her and I uh, happen to share the same business school, but we've gotten to know each other in other ways. A lot uh, than I more, am more recently, <laughs> in the last few years, she did admit to reading the Tim Keller case study after I sent it to her, uh, and, uh, which is not a flattering one. But long story short is this we talk about what it takes to actually step up as a state and as a city in our community, and we always say it means our leaders have to collaborate. And I am proud to say that Pat has really stepped up the game in the last few years. What PNM and her team has accomplished at the state level with their commitment to renewable energy by 2045 is that similar story of all of a sudden New Mexico being, how come we are not to, yes, we are going to be a leader in renewable energy. Yeah. That is in large part due to the woman at the top, CEO of PNM, Pat Colon. Thank you, Mayor. And the mayor asked if we would have a moment of silence for the longest um, serving New Mexico State Senator, Navajo Code Talker, John Pinto, who we lost last Friday. So please. I think you all know that Senator Pinto represented District 3, which is a, long, a large section of western New Mexico. He served as a U.S. Marines at the Code Talker and went to work with his teacher. And my favorite story about him when he was first elected in 1997, and to show his unwavering commitment to serve, he hitchhiked to Santa Fe. And I think that that is just amazing. And I hope that his public service is an example um, to us all, just like the mayor and all our other wonderful public servants. And today, I'm thrilled to stand here once again uh, with the city of Albuquerque to partner and to reaffirm our position as a national leader in renewable energy. And we also stand here today with our partners from the Hickory Apache Nation to show that renewable energy offers opportunities for all of our communities throughout the state. And I'm also proud to stand here with the PNM employees who mapped out an innovative plan to develop this one-of-a-kind solar power project that puts New Mexico at the forefront as a national leader, showing that utilities can have a true partnership with our customers. This can, and I hope it is, a model for other states to follow. And we're here today moving boldly thanks to Mayor Keller, who has made sustainability and renewable energy a huge priority for the city in which we live and work. Mayor Keller had the foresight to know that renewable energy is a way to reduce the city's carbon footprint, while unlocking the power of renewable energy to ignite economic development and spark entrepreneurship. We're here today because the Hickory Apache Nation understood the vital role that they could play as partners in meeting our state's energy goal while also energizing their own local economy. You know, Mayor Keller took the lead to solve the city's renewable energy and came to PNM and said, how can we work together? And here we are today with Solar Direct. Due to our long history working in New Mexico, we're I think 102 years old this year, 
coupled with our commitment to our state, we built a new program from the ground up, there's none like this anywhere else in the United States, to the benefit of all New Mexicans. We're gonna work with tribal, municipal, and governmental education and large customers. They can subscribe to all the solar energy that they need. They can energize their workforce, pun intended, and electrify their operations all without other customers who aren't part of the program subsidizing their goals. We know renewable energy has the power to attract businesses, and these partnerships will only make us more attractive for small and large businesses that want to relocate or expand their businesses in a state that is willing and able to partner with them on renewable and carbon-free energy. p and Solar Direct is going to be a national model showcasing how governments, businesses, and utilities can work together. We're on the path to meet the mayor's goals to having the city powered by 100% renewable energy because of our working together as partners. The city of Albuquerque helped make Solar Direct possible, actually led the way because of their commitment to sustainability. And thanks to the leadership at our state, we now have the policies in place to leverage these abundant natural resources that we have in New Mexico, both of which are making an appearance today, the sun and the wind. Thanks to our partnerships, like the one with the Hickory and Apache Nation, I know my notes are blowing up here, um, we create a voluntary program as an affordable means to look out for the best interest of all of our customers in every step of the way. The p and Solar Direct program if approved by the Public Regulation Commission, will not only add 50 megawatts of new solar to our grid, it has the added benefit of bringing communities together to realize the tremendous potential of the renewable economy. By partnering with the Hickory Apache Nation, p and Solar Direct will bring new jobs, new opportunities, and new ways for our tribal partners to participate in and benefit from the transition to a renewable energy economy. Special thanks to President-elect Darrell Pies and the Hickory Apache Tribal Council. This is going to bring us together as partners. I think p and Solar Direct is a symbol of our state, our state government, our utility, our communities, and our tribes working together to have a positive impact on our state. Got a paper clip here that gets in the way. A recent MIT study said, if you want to decarbonize, and you're serious about it, and you want to do it fast, projects like Solar Direct are the things to do. Solar at scale is simply less expensive, and it's much faster to put up large scale plants. So we're confident that this project is a great project for the PRC to consider. We hope this is seen as a viable and transformational project that meets customers' needs without our other customers taking on financial responsibility. We also know that we wouldn't be here without the vision of Mayor Keller, and we thank him and applaud him for that vision to make Albuquerque a leader in the clean energy economy. Thank you very much, Mayor Keller. good demonstration of, of wind power with that. <laughs> That's right. Uh, well, the uh, next individual I want to introduce uh, for me is the, our president-elect from the Hickory Apache Nation. I want to share just a few words. I know in, in the metro area, uh, many folks might not have had the, uh, the experience of, of visiting Dulce, New Mexico and Hickory Apache Nation. I know for me in some small way, this is sort of extra special. This is the icing on the cake. I used to work for the Hickorias for about two years uh, back when I was a state senator. And uh, I spent a lot of time driving uh, back and forth from here to Dulce. It is one of the most beautiful and enchanting places in our state. And there are there is very stiff competition. I'm saying that knowing how awesome our state is. But I have to tell you, my wife and I have camped in Stone Lakes. Uh, they have which is another controversial statement, probably the best hunting in the state of New Mexico. Uh, and so uh, extra special for me to reconnect uh, with in many ways a nation that helped me grow up as a New Mexican uh, and as an adult and as a public leader. 
And so we are honored today to be here with uh, numerous officials and legislative council members from the Hickory Apache Nation and the newly elected president, uh, President-elect Daryl Pius. President, we love you. Your Good morning, Ben Joel. Uh, the Hickory Apache Nation uh, welcomes the opportunity to partner with the city of Albuquerque in an important historical uh, project that's um, in the making the, regarding the renewable energy project. The Hickory Apache Nation is now proven as le proven leader in the development of uh, development of renewable resources. We continue to go ahead and look, work uh, forward, look forward to being able to part with our partners, and we are happy that PNM selected Hikria as the site to do this development and being able to be the hub between the Four Corners area and between Albuquerque and Hikria. And in our development of the, the process of economic development, this is one of the process that we've taken on to be able to build a a system that is able to accommodate not only Albuquerque, but also in the future to accommodate the, the city of Albuquerque as it shuts down its uh, coal plants and uh, the electrical plants in that area. Uh, we also uh, would like to thank Mayor Keller and PNM President and CEO Pat Vincent Colon for this historic uh, collaboration. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much, President. And uh, if folks uh, want to go visit, I, I recommend the Little Beaver Festival. The team up here can tell you about it. Uh, you can also find just about every politician in the state up there for that one. So it'll be a busy one this year and next year for sure uh, with elections upon us. So next up, uh, I can't really do almost anything without the help of our city council. And uh, for us, I think we've found uh, ways to work together, especially big ways to work together, whether it's our budget, whether it's ordinances, whether it's our GO bond. Uh, we definitely are aligned when it comes to the top priorities of the state, and I'm so grateful for that each and every day. Of course, I meant priorities of the city, uh, but I also I want to introduce one counselor, but also want to acknowledge Councilor Winter in the back. He's busy training for Senior Olympics. Uh, stay tuned uh, for him in a few weeks. And to talk about the council's efforts and um, uh, their, his leadership with respect to renewable energy and sponsorship of a host of ordinances over his career on this, our city councilor, Pat Davis. Pat. Uh, thanks, Mayor. Thanks, Pat. Thanks, Mr. President and, and uh, Hickory members. What a difference a few years makes in terms of the city of Albuquerque and our climate footprint. Uh, some of you remember, maybe three years ago or so, uh, Councilor Winter will remember, Councilor Benton and I sort of asked our colleagues to take a gamble with us and pass the city's first renewable energy standard with friends like Environment New Mexico, 350, and others. Um, we spent some time trying to figure out what it meant for a city like ours uh, to be a leader on climate change and on renewable energy. Uh, our colleagues helped us pass our very first renewable energy standard, just 25% by 2025, without any plan at all about how we would get there. Uh, that said, uh, we went, did it because we wanted to test the premise that cities like ours could not be a leader on sustainability, on renewable energy. And now, in the era when we, can't, we don't have a whole lot of cooperation on this issue, out of Washington, it's incredibly important that cities like ours are accepting our responsibility, that mayors like ours are signing the mayor's climate challenge, that PNM, our homegrown local utility, is stepping up to ensure that the next generation of New Mexicans will inherit an environment and a community that is safer, cleaner, and more affordable than ever before. What was clear when we did all that a few years ago was that solar and renewable energy was one of the fastest growing sectors in our climate, or in our community. Um, and so we partnered with Senator Heinrich and Sandia Labs Energy, uh, Indian Energy Programs to create a toolkit to teach other cities how to do those small things we had done, like converting a couple of dozen city facilities to renewable energy. That lowered our footprint, we reinvested, uh, sorry to PNM, we reinvested the money we used to pay uh, for that power back into our facilities, back into our workers, back into our community. Uh, but 
we were never in a place where we thought we would ever get beyond that 25% goal. And then Mayor Keller came to office. And he didn't accept any of the premises that had been laid out before any more than we tried. And for the first time, we have a mayor and a city and a community of, uh, from all across the state who see the opportunity for us not just to follow other cities, but to be a leader. I couldn't be more excited and more proud uh, of our city today. Those small things that we all worked on for years as a community, putting solar on small facilities, uh, the biggest one that you can go see now at the bio park, more than two dozen city facilities are now powered by renewable energy, um, and taking our early goal of 25% and quadrupling it, uh, to 100% by 2025 under this mayor is a huge step forward for a city like ours. And more importantly, we're fulfilling that challenge by partnering with PM, the Hickory Nation, and to put more New Mexicans to work, to invest in our own companies and our own future. And that's a lesson that we can all proudly share with everybody else in the country as a way to do this. Uh, I have to admit, this is a day I didn't think would ever come to the city of Albuquerque, and certainly not this quickly. So I couldn't be more proud, and I can't wait to flip that switch in City Hall and know that 100% of that energy is coming from New Mexican-built and owned energy power that's 100% renewable. Thank you so much for helping us do that. Now, uh, before we bring up some of our uh, development partners, I do want to mention a couple of other folks who've been instrumental in this project uh, in their uh, wearing uh, their respective hats. Uh, one is uh, we are is a, a related project revamping our uh, Indian Advisory Commission. And so I'm not going to go into the details today, but we now have uh, individuals represented from Pueblos around us and adjacent lands. And uh, we also have a wonderful chairman who has shepherded this. I just want to acknowledge Ron Solomon for his leadership. Thank you for this new era we're bringing in. And also I want to mention a woman who has uh, quietly taken over one of our most important departments in the city and has bridged her past work at Sandia Laboratories with now uh, being in charge of all our city's environmental health efforts. And environmental health, I want to remind folks too, is one of the few extraterritorial departments in the city that actually oversees the whole region's environmental health in many ways. That's our new director of environmental health, Sandra Begay. Sandra, this project's been a long, long time coming. Who would have, who would have thought you'd finish it as director of environmental health in the city of Albuquerque? So, uh, thank you so much, Sandra. Okay, now to talk about the project itself, uh, we have our vice president of business development. Uh, from uh, Hecate Energy, uh, and also I believe he's one of the partner firms is uh, Osceola Energy as well, to talk about the project itself, Mr. Paul Turner. Where you? There you are. Do you both want to come up? Yeah, sure. And also Craig Overmeyer. Good morning. Thank you very much for having us here. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, my name's Craig Overmeyer. I'm the Vice President of Operations for Hecate Energy. And on behalf of the development team, we have here with us also Paul Turner, the Vice President of business development for Hecate Energy, and our other partner in this project is also Primary Energy, and we have with us here today Mo Kefflicker. Together we have been working for the past six months with both the Hickory Nation and with p and to bring the project forward to where it is today, and we're very excited about the progress that's been made. It doesn't take very much to see how important the sun is in New Mexico. It's on every flag, it's on every license plate virtually, and it symbolizes a tie to the past, both culturally and with respect to the heritage of the state. I'd like to suggest today, though, that you start looking at that symbol a little bit differently. And you look at it, in fact, as a tie to the future, a clean energy future. A lot of people talk about what can be done, about the opportunities and the challenges that are presented us today, and especially in the energy sector. But talking about it really isn't enough to get it done. And we've heard it already, but what it does take is leadership, it takes commitment, and it takes a drive in order to bring those policies forward. And we have the mayor here to thank for that, for bringing this project to where it is today, because it's under his leadership that we have a project on the precipice of moving forward. At this point, I think the most exciting thing will be when we come back together again and dedicate the facility. But in order to get there, it's going to require the cooperation of many different groups. We've had a great experience to date working with PNM, 
and with the Hickorya Nation, and we look forward to that continued cooperation to bring this project online in order to meet the goals of 100% clean energy for Albuquerque. Thank you. Well, with that, I want to uh, echo that we are excited to, to, for the next time, we'll all be together. In the meantime, you've got a lot of work to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, hopefully, too, we'll, we'll see, we'll probably have something in Albuquerque, but also, of course, on site, and we'll all get to take that uh, tremendous journey out uh, to the Hickory Nation. So with that, I want to thank everyone for coming. If you have questions, uh, we can certainly take those. I think we'll do them individually, and so uh, we can do that afterwards. And uh, again, also just want to acknowledge all the advocates that are out there who have been fighting for this uh, for a long, long time. And uh, I think finally we are honoring all that you've been fighting for as a community together. And that is a special thing and I think honors a lot of your dedication as well. So with that, thank you so much. And we look forward uh, to, to plugging in soon. Thank you so much.